I think what Final Cut has shown forcibly is here we are a creative community and we depend on privately held or public corporations to supply us with our tools. And that's been the case for quite a while, but we were kind of, we were able to sort of ignore it. And what, what this does is say, no, this is, this is real. Um, the, uh, in the old days on film, if your editing machine broke, you could actually cut it by hand. You could take out a pair of scissors and you could keep going. It would be awkward, it would take a long time, it would be imperfect, but you could keep going. Um, and now you can't. Uh, if, if, if your computer shuts down, you can't work. There's, there's no, you know, it's like the difference between an old automobile where you could get out the screwdriver and figure out what the uh, what was wrong with the carburetor and now with everything being electronic and programmed if something deep happens to it the average person the non non trained mechanic can't deal with it and so we're that's a, that's one thing I'm I'm looking at which is what I think what we need for editing now is the equivalent of what the ca camera has which is the SIMPTI manual, the Society of Motion Picture Television Engineers manual that says, these are the basics. This is what a camera has to have in terms of focus and tolerances. And if you, the manufacturer, want to make it and be official, this is what it has to be. And we haven't really had to have that for editing because our legacy equipment, the Moviolas and the Chems, were so basically simple. Um, uh, that we could kind of ignore that. There, there were standards for projection, what is correct projection, but not for editing machines. But now editing post-production is so uh, complicated, but it, it doesn't have the benefit of a, a Bible that says here are the uh, standards for um, you know, display and, and uh, manipulation of the edited image and sound. So maybe we need something like that, or as a fallback, you know, the uh, Lightworks went out of business, but it's now a public um, kind of a wiki editor that's open to development by the world at large, as far as I understand it. Um, so that that you know, it it might be good to have that uh, because uh, you know I, I, I'm. What if all of every, everyone except Apple went out of business uh, for some reason and Apple said, we're just going to do consumer stuff? What would we do? You know, we, we have to have some idea of that because we are now dependent on, uh, for our living on the, uh, the plans of giant corporations that have us as a tiny, tiny fragment of their uh, interest. Um, you know, it's, it's not true for Avid. Avid is still a small corporation, uh, does both picture editing through Avid and Pro Tools, um, and they are really dedicated to the professional uh, market. That, that's, the, you know, that's their existence. But they're also, they're, they're hurting right now, Avid. Is it just professionals being I don't want to learn the new way. I want my source record. I need this, but I'm not prepared to look at that. Yeah, well, a certain percentage, I don't know what that percentage is, but a certain percentage is that. Um, it's just that uh, there, there is a, we've stubbed our toe across this transom. Uh, whether that's going to get infected or not uh, and really hurt us, we won't know for a while, but it, it hurts right now. And it, it, you know, you can say you know, what you said about editing is true, uh, but you know, let's say uh, um, that guy over there uh, is a concert pianist and he is performing this uh, Rachmaninoff thing and you say, well you can't use the uh, Steinway, we've got this nice uh, upright 
piano from the bar around the corner. It plays music. It's got 88 keys. It's in tune. What's, what's the problem? Well, he couldn't, you know, he could do it, but it would be comical. It wouldn't, we're doing very sophisticated things. We're not just cutting and pasting and slipping things out of sync. Um, and if, if, we, if our, if our uh, tools are taken away from us, those, those sophisticated tools, uh, and that allow us to collaborate with other artists, uh, the sound department, the music department, the colorist, uh, and we can't really look at a calibrated monitor to see exactly what we're doing. We're, it's like playing on the upright. We're, you know, okay, we, we could do it, but we have to reconsider the kind of films we're making and uh, what we're doing um, at the feature level. It's the whole thing of Final Cut 10, aside from you know the mechanics and how it works, whether you press P for position to actually stop the magnetic timeline in action, you know, all those, that's the mechanics of how it works. But the actual metadata and searching, that's what's gone yeah. in a different direction. That's what's changed big time. Yeah. A professional is going to want to take all that on board or, or do they just want to work in a simple, I've got my bins here, I've got my timeline, I look at it here, I look at it here. I don't want to get into all of this detail. Yeah. Do you have a comment on that? Well. Uh, again, it depends on who you are. I'm kind of a metadata person. You know, I, I have and have had for 25 years a very extensive database uh, that I've developed on using FileMaker, which is basically metadata. Um, and that works in conjunction with whatever system. I, you know, I used it when I was editing on the Chem. I used it when I started editing on the Avid, and I'm using it working with Final Cut Pro. And you know, whatever I wind up using two years from now, I'm sure I will use this. I, it's just the, kind of the way my mind works. I like taking notes. I, I like this, the feeling of knowing where everything is and, and that things are tagged, so to speak. So I'm, um, I, I know that there are some people who don't do that. In fact, most people don't. Um, and, you know, for them, I, I suspect that they will either stay working in Avid, which is built that way, although Avid also are going into metadata. It's, it's kind of where things are drifting, um, or not even drifting, they're, they're rushing uh, into the metadata world. Um, so, you know. It's unstoppable. <laughs> I, I, I think so, um, because it ties everything, everything gets tied together as a result. Um, you can, you can, metadata can cross the boundaries between different applications. We, uh, we had, I, I would select still frames in Final Cut. These would get tagged with their uh, scene number and um, whether they were one out of three or two out of three uh, and the shot number. And then these would get exported to FileMaker where they would get uh, crunched uh, in that database and then printed out. So um, that's just one example out of dozens uh, where we're using metadata to cross between applications. Um, you know, Steve Spielberg kept using the Moviola uh, until Tintin, I guess. Uh, I, I don't see how he could cut Tintin with a Moviola. Um, but, uh, you know, he liked that. Um, and, but there comes a time when there are just no more, there aren't any more Moviolas and there isn't any film, physical film, to put in Moviolas unless you wanted to pay, you know, 10 times what it costs today as a specialized lab. Um, so things do shift and you know, they are shifting in the metadata direction and Final Cut 10 is built on metadata. That, that's its, it, its model. And that, that's how they're now able to have track, uh, you know, a clip will be called dialogue and so it will go out the dialogue pipe because the metadata tells it so, not that it's on track one, which you have assigned to go in this direction, which is to the dialogue direction. So it's, it's content-based rather than location-based.
Uh, and the same thing would apply to bins. Bins are, okay, put it in this location that, you know. Um, you know, I, I would like to see uh, maybe, uh, maybe there can be a combination of that at some point where you put it in the bin and by putting it in the bin, it gets tagged with that bin so that you get both the physicality of uh, locating and tagging at the same time. I do wonder whether this is a big deal what's gone on this year or whether it is just a blip in the timeline of editing because back in you know 79 to 84 when all the TV stations went from film to tape and there were a lot of upset film cameramen they really did not like tape and tape was pretty primitive back then there were split systems with three quarter inch you know you carry around something that way to turn you need a, a separate assistant just to carry the split system sometimes and it could be that this evens out and in a few years it's not even thought about that the upheaval that we've been through yeah. it's just was big in our lives for that moment yeah. and and we got to keep in mind as well all those up and coming through high school into university and they're gonna be able to buy a full featured editing system for three hundred dollars yeah I mean if if we take the turbulence out of it because right. this is what we know and this is our lives yeah um, it could actually be one of the better things that's actually happened in editing. I'm being very optimistic. Yeah. No, um, I, I, I agree. I, you know, I, I am cautiously optimistic. I, I'm, I'm still smarting from having the Band-Aid ripped off. You know? and, and the other thing that makes it hurt is you know, we know so collectively, that there was a better way to take off the Band-Aid. You know, that the actual way that it was done Know, by simultaneously releasing a product that we couldn't use professionally and end of lifing the product that we were using sent a kind of a stick in the eye message, um, which didn't seem to be necessary. Um, you know, there are all kinds of scenarios out there for why didn't they just release this as Final Cut Express and then gradually phase it in. But um, they've done it, you know, it's. Uh, preemptive uh, strike in a sense uh, and but it still it hurt uh, to really you know in a sense we were living in a house that we kind of grown familiar with and then the landlord came in and turned off the heating end of life okay you got to move and it's getting cold in here and oh look there's another house over there well move hey it looks great and you go over and you move in and you realize Wait a minute. There's no roof and there's no plumbing yet. How can I live here? It, you know, so Apple are installing the plumbing and installing the roof. And yes, uh, in a year, in six months, uh, um, we'll all maybe be sitting in things. What what was all that? What was all that about? Well, it was about something. Uh, it was about. Um, you know, a lot of people, including myself, had a little moment of, I don't trust this anymore. It, it was that thing we were talking about earlier. We suddenly realized how dependent we are on, for our livelihood, on corporations, Apple, uh, making something that we can use. And there were a lot of particulars to that uh, because we're professionals and we have all of these things that link us to the ecosystem, the, the economic system around us of vendors and studios and deliverables and all of this stuff. Um, and suddenly that was all called into question. And so it, it was disturbing, um, but more disturbing was the hint of why did they do it this, what, you know, suddenly you wondered. Um, and the, the warm and fuzzy feeling that was a little frayed. Um, and, you know, it'll take a little while to get that feeling back again. Video, 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 video.